Hello, good evening. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Simons. I head the customer success team at MedSynapse. And uh, to briefly introduce myself, I'm a practicing doctor and I now help companies innovate and grow in the realm of healthcare. So with MedSynapse, my role basically is to help companies engage with HCPs, ensure that the project objectives are met, but at the core of all, keep HCPs at the center of all things so that we can ensure success for the project, but also ensure that HCPs are getting the information they need to enhance the clinical outcomes and their patient satisfaction as well. So the core of today's presentation will be focusing on how to engage with HCPs and let's delve down right to it. So a brief about MedSynapse itself. So MedSynapse is a platform to engaged healthcare providers. It is a community for healthcare providers. Currently, we are working in the Southeast Asian region, the Middle East region, as well as Africa. Now, all members of the platform are verified doctors, and only doc doctors whose accounts are verified get access to the platform and the account is activated. So here on the slide, you see what doctors need. Right? Why do doctors want to engage on a platform such as this? What information is it that they're looking forward to? So basically they want to connect and collaborate. They want to understand what's happening in the medical field, understand healthcare policy updates. What are the latest happenings in terms of approvals, in terms of treatment protocols and guidelines, as well as they want to collaborate with their peers. They want to understand what their colleagues, what thought leaders in the space have to talk about, understand best practices, and follow them in their clinical settings as well. In this respect, they want to engage in clinical discussions, also increase their influence in the digital sphere, right? So they want to engage, communicate, increase their influence, and become guides and mentors for other doctors as well in the long run. They want to access news updates, continued medication, medical education modules, as well as treatment protocols and guidelines. On the hospital side of things, where you have an institution, what we enable them to do is to conduct content marketing for their content on the platform, to connect with the brand, to manage specialist influence, as well as raise awareness campaigns and provide detailed analytics. Now, the entire ecosystem also enables companies to connect with doctors, right? So you have pharmaceutical companies, you have med device companies. So how can they engage with doctors and ensure that they are able to build that connect? So with companies, we help them with content marketing and we ensure that we understand what their project objectives are and align it to the requirements of the HCPs themselves so that ultimately, like I've explained, enhancing clinical outcomes and helping doctors make better clinical decisions. So moving on, some of the areas that we've seen a lot of uh, traction happening on the platform are uh, doctors are looking to engage in a community space that is safe, that is closed, where they can engage with their peers, where they can voice out their concerns, their challenges, their informational requirements, and where they can educate and learn. So that's where they kind of uh, you know, grow. That's why the platform is so vibrant and that's where the engagement happens. In terms of certain areas where we've seen a lot of engagement happening, it's drug updates with regard to recent approvals, how to use it in their clinical practice and how to ensure that they choose the right treatment modality for the right patient. Continued medical education once again becomes a core area for doctors because they need to stay updated in their field and also for younger graduates uh, for them because they're looking for a platform to learn and grow. And of course, uh, treatment updates in terms of discussing challenging cases, uh, case management in special scenarios and various treatment modalities and procedures. Like I mentioned, also another significant areas that HCPs are looking to kind of grow the influence in the digital or sphere is, you know, they want to become thought leaders, influencers in the digital medium, 
go to the point of becoming a rising star and ultimately the aspiration is to become an opinion leader so by engaging with their peers communicating and expressing their experience and sharing their knowledge that's why they ultimately want to see themselves now talking a little bit about marketing products in the digital space right now we know that in the last one and a half years digital marketing has gone from a good to have to a must have so there have been a lot of traditional and conventional ways of marketing in the digital space but what we need to understand is what one company has their competitors have it too right so there is a lot of information that's being thrown out at hcps so how likely are they to re read into your particular message right so to understand that uh, we need to comprehend that the messaging or the way of messaging needs to be unique it needs to be remarkable it needs to be differentiated only then is it possible to you know stand out in the crowd now what we propose generally from based on our experience interacting with the hcps is that what we refer to as the purple crow approach or being remarkable right it's whatever you put across to your hcps it has to be worth talking about it has to be worth noticing it has to be exceptional it has to be new and interesting right the traditional way of discussing things of yelling out to the customer of hopping on the same things over and over again it's not going to work rather you need to have a very strong pull component to the content that is being put across so it needs to be that the audience has to come to you and not the other way around so recommending useful information understanding their consumption patterns understanding what areas they're looking to focus on plays a very important role in this so content based marketing becomes key so moving on a little further just to give you a sense of what is it that i'm speaking and where i'm coming from right so we need to understand that we need to build the doctor base first so medsynapse is a platform we're actively engaging doctors in southeast and east asia and as well as the middle east region these are some of the numbers that we're looking at and you know i i believe that numbers speak for themselves so we see a monthly retention rate of close to 65% we see unique sessions of around 5000 to 6000 we see new registration of doctors upwards of 3600 and an average time spent per session of 5 minutes 24 seconds on the platform now what is it the doctors are doing during this time that they spend right so if you are to talk about content in terms of needs we can see that i would primarily see that content can be divided into timeless content and contextual content now we're talking about timeless content it refers to the appeal of content across age groups across geographies and across time frame right so this type of content predominantly includes guidelines treatment protocols challenging case management healthcare policy updates drug approvals all of the like right but if you look looking at it from a contextual point of view it refers to a particular context so the best example i can give here that everybody can possibly relate to is pre covid and post covid right so every content that's been coming out post covid there is some element of covid related to it somewhere right so if you look at the timeline per se we can see that initially it was more about management of covid management of the, of the sequelae and later on probably possibly in the second wave of the disease we saw a lot more discussions and about antifungal treatment particularly mucormycosis and later on once the vaccines came into play it's about assessing which one was most beneficial and then there was pediatric vaccinations booster doses ultimately what we see now is about dealing with you know the long term sequelae regarding long haulers also complications related to cardiovascular or neurological conditions related to covid right so that's more or less how it's based on a contextual setting it might be particular to particular geography a country or an age group so another area what we see is trying to cater to doctors particularly with regard to the kind of content that they want to see whether it's audio based content wherein we've started uh, an initiative wherein we've started publishing more podcasts so when we uh, this works really well especially when we're looking at the younger generation of uh, doctors who you know spend more time listening to these and since it's worked in one particular specialty we're extending it to other specialties as well I'm moving on a little further especially with regard to our project partners we work across the region with different clientele 
especially in the healthcare setting, both pharmaceutical and medical devices. These are some of the companies that we work with. And the entire idea is to develop content-based marketing solutions for these pharmaceutical partners so that they can engage with the HCPs, get their message across, but ensure that the HCP is at the center of all things. So one example here that I would like to you know, raise is the Sanofi Health Connect project that we have in the Southeast Asian region. So this project primarily deals with digestive health and the allergic disease portfolio, wherein the entire crux of the project is to reach to the target specialities in this particular segment by providing content that is relevant to them. As part of this project, they also provide patient education material, which is another content format that we see is very engaging for doctors in this uh, region because they are able to add value to their practice in terms of educating and counseling the patients as well. As part of this project, we've reached over 32K doctors and interacted with with over 200 of them. And the average spend time you can notice here is well above the average that we've displayed previously of five minutes, 24 seconds. So here it's around six minutes, 35 seconds. And on the right-hand side, you can see the geography distribution in terms of the different countries that have been reached out to and engaged with as part of this project. A little deeper dive into this, the next slide talks predominantly with regard to reach in terms of speciality. So these are some of the specialities we've engaged. So this is by reach, uh, interactions, and also by likes and comments that we see for this particular project. Another example that I would like to raise here is the Onco Connect project that I've mentioned. This is primarily for the oncologists across uh, globally, right? So initially, when we started off, we were we had a robust presence in Southeast Asia and Middle Eastern countries. But as a trend, we saw that doctors in this region wanted to interact with doctors elsewhere as well to understand best practices. For example, in Singapore, we saw that doctors wanted to connect with doctors in Japan. They wanted with doctors with, in the U.S. Similarly, in the Middle Eastern geography, they wanted to understand best practices in North America, in Europe. And with that intention, we are looking at expanding the geographical reach to these areas as well. So understanding what the HCP requires is very key in providing information to them so that they come back to the content and they know this enhances the appeal of the platform or of the content that you are providing to them. So in terms of solutions, what is it that we offer in terms of how can our pharmaceutical clients add more value to doctors? First of all, we have the brand connect, which is nothing but raising awareness of the brand. But herein, what needs to be remembered is not just to keep the brand messaging at the core, but to understand at a very basic level what doctors are looking for in that particular therapy area or indication and align that with the objective of the brand itself. So what I mean to say here is understand the consumption patterns of doctors themselves, right? So if you're looking at a doctor who is possibly a younger doctor, then to understand from their mindset what they're looking for. They tend to be more technologically savvy, right? And But however, you need to remember that because they're tech savvy, they, their attention is spread across different platforms and different applications. So the amount of time that you have with the doctor is very limited. So it's necessary to customize the content in a manner that wraps your attention within that particular time frame. Secondly, if, you, if you're engaging more with mid-career doctors, they want to, you know, disseminate information, share their experience, and that's wherein they, you will see the huge chunk of them. And finally, your KOLs and veterans, they tend to, you know, comment less, they tend to uh, engage less on content, but they're more prone to giving interviews, engaging on panel discussions and webinars, and that's the way to engage them best. The second one, of course, here we see the launchpad. This is more to do with launching a product, but here it's important that before you go into launching a product and talking about the molecule itself, it's very important to ensure that you have a followership, a base. So how do you do that? So pre-launch activities in the sense play a very important role where you're establishing yourself as a thought leader, show doctors that this is the content that you know provides them with the utmost value and they'll be sure to come back for more. And once you've established that advocacy among them, you've established proponents among the doctors themselves, you will be able to provide your brand message much more easily. The acceptance levels also will be that much more higher. 
Therapy Plus is wherein it's about building a therapy specific content. This works best for established portfolios wherein uh, it's the molecules have been in existence for a long time, especially legacy molecules, where it is being perceived as a thought leader in this particular space. Nutriverse is more to do with the nutritional content that we have, especially in the pediatric, maternal, as well as the geriatric space. Understanding the needs in this segment specifically, we work with a couple of companies in this space as well, wherein it is important because in a lot of these cases, the HCPs become the gatekeepers, right? So unless they recommend the brand or at least they do not de-recommend it, the patients are not going to consume it. So influencing the doctors and making them understand the science behind these products become very important and building that connect with them so that they're that much more open to recommending it to their patients also. And therein you will see the behavior shift happening. MedStar, on the other hand, is more for over-the-counter products, wherein it's more about uh, talking about the therapy area more holistically, because uh, the science on this might be slightly on the lower end, but it is important that we cover it in, in a very uh, wholehearted manner, because understanding what doctors are looking for in this therapy space becomes essential in providing them with the right information and uh, knowledge. So overall, uh, what I would like to convey here is as key messages uh, in terms of reaching out to doctors is to ensure that we provide content that doctors are looking for, keeping them at the center of all things, and also understand that content marketing campaigns are not a one-off thing. So you cannot do them sporadically. It is a long-term commitment. Normally, we recommend it between anywhere between 9 to 12 months. So that's when you can see real results. It takes time, it takes effort, efforts, but the results will come. And also in the last one, one and a half years, we've seen that you know digital is a must have and a lot of companies are starting their own digital assets, which are of course very good. And that is the way forward. But what's important to remember is that, is this sufficient? So my answer to this would be no because you also need to look at those platforms where doctors are already available, where they are vibrantly engaging, because these are areas where you will be able to understand their unmet needs, their requirements, and cater to them specifically. And also, these platforms are generally perceived as more neutral and unbiased in the minds of doctors. So that is the key message I have for all of you here. Thank you for your patient listening.